Sometimes you need a little distance to see how beautiful your home really is. And here it is. These are scenes that were shot from the International Space Station 200 miles above the Earth. A German filmmaker assembled them into a breathtaking time-lapse video. And some of the most spectacular scenes feature the northern and southern lights glowing in brilliant green. And the blue flashes are wow. from lightning. Beautiful. It's amazing, isn't it? A South Los Angeles mechanic hopes to change the automobile industry by turning fine vintage sports cars into electric cars. Pretty cool. KTLA's Dave Malkoff shows us how he's pulling the plug on gas vehicles. Behind that organic garden, there's a quiet revolution going on forged in steel and solder. Uh, we are at uh, my shop here in uh, a neighborhood called Canterbury Knolls. Just north of Inglewood in South L.A. is Greg Abbott's garage. Now with his signature mustache and glasses, everyone calls him Gadget. It's metal fabricating. I used to be a contractor and then I moved into um, the electric cars. Every day, Gadget's in here converting gas cars to electric. Any car, any motorcycle can be fully plug-in rechargeable. So there's an electric motor down inside here, and it goes directly into the transmission. And in this box, there's those batteries, 365 volts worth charging overnight. This car is over 100 miles, and the car that I drive, I get about 150. But it's expensive, so it, it's, it is a, you know, it's a big jump. It's 30 grand. So. Yeah, well, I'm Chris Payne, and I'm the director of Revenge of the Electric Car. I, I think what we're witnessing now is, uh, is probably the most significant revolution of our lifetime. A new movie where you see just how hard it was for Gadget to build his business. I'm Gadget. I've been living and working in this warehouse for 16 years. And then for the last couple years, I've been doing electric cars. Chris Payne is the same guy who in 2006 directed Who Killed the Electric Car, a film about how automakers and other powerful people were doing everything they could to put the brakes on this stuff. And now, only five years later, you have the car companies coming back and going, wait, 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 we want to be in the game on electric cars. From what I've seen, all the major car companies are already have models that they're, they're pushing. Nissan's Leaf and GM's Chevy Volt lead the pack. In the new documentary, we see how little shops like Gadgets here in South L.A. are coexisting with Detroit and Tokyo. The technology is there. The batteries are there. It's all about the batteries themselves, a revolution that started in your pocket. So this is my cell phone here. What is, what is this thing here? Ah, well, that, that's a little lithium-ion battery. Faster, smaller, lighter, cell phone-type batteries are what power or help to power every new electric car out there. So what you just showed me is basically one of these. For electric cars to work, you have to mine the lithium. There are stories that we're going to run out of it, but there's actually very little lithium in a battery. It's mostly copper and, and iron. And you got to mine the coal for power plants as well. The difference is, is that right now, coal is only 50% of the U.S. grid, so... It's already, an electric car is already 50% cleaner than an electric, than a, than a gasoline car. The future for the electric car all depends, of course, on how many sell in the next few years. Both here at Gadget's shop. He's the kind of guy that's uh, making change happen without being a big corporation. And in the world's new car showrooms. Little by little, if we all chip away at it, I think the world will change. It needs to happen quickly. In South L.A., Dave Malkoff, KTLA 5 News. All right, coming up next, a story that will make travelers cringe.